That's it, nigga. That's all it takes for your niggas. Non essential workers, which have been in place for over a week already, anyway. Earlier, Governor Cuomo called a mandatory quarantine of New York un American and told CNN that it would have done more harm than good, especially to the nation's economy. There are already COVID-19 cases reported in every state in the nation, but the president claimed that other states don't want this region spreading it. The governor announced new numbers today, over 52,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases in the state. That's 8,000 more than the day before. He had several other announcements at his latest pandemic briefing. The New York presidential primary will be moved to June 23rd now. I don't think it's wise to be bringing a lot of people to one location to vote, a lot of people touching one doorknob, a lot of people touching one uh, pen. And New Yorkers will have until July 15th to file state taxes. Meanwhile, Cuomo announced there will be some COVID-19 only hospitals set up. It's smarter to keep the COVID patients separate. You don't want a person who goes into a hospital with one situation developing COVID because they happen to be exposed. And we're going to isolate uh, 600 beds for just this treatment. The head of the MTA is the latest local official to test positive for the coronavirus. MTA Chair Patrick Foy received his diagnosis today. A statement from the MTA says he feels fine and is currently isolating and working from home. The agency says Foy was last in the office on Wednesday and did maintain a safe social distance, although he hadn't had any symptoms yet. The NYPD is now in mourning. A veteran police detective has become the department's first officer to die of COVID-19. Detective Cedric Dixon went into the hospital Friday and sources tell Tenten Wind that in addition to his virus symptoms, he had undiagnosed diabetes. Within a day, he was dead. Police Commissioner Dermot Shea said we are hurting and we are fine. Dixon was 48 years old and was assigned to the 32 Precinct Detective Squad in Washington Heights. He was known to his friends as someone who could fix anything electronically. He died at North Central Rob Hospital. He had been a police officer for 23 years. He is the third member of the NYPD to die of COVID-19. Carol Dioria 1010 wins at police headquarters. 5 now the official 1010 winds acting weather forte forecast. It starts with periods of rain overnight at a low of 44. Tomorrow, a little more rain and drizzle expected under gray skies, high of 53. A cloudy evening after that with a low near 50. Then milder temperatures for Monday, a high of 64 and at least some sunshine. Looks like Tuesday will be cloudy and cooler again, high of 53. Right now, we have 46 degrees and cloudy skies. We are going down to 44 overnight in Midtown. Well, nurses held a protest outside Jacoby Hospital in the after rationing protective equipment for their health care workers. My co-workers are just falling. We have this incubated upstairs. We have doctors. We have nurses. We have clerks. People in hospitals are not incubated because of what we don't have in white PPE. So we basically are coming to work to get killed. At least one health care worker in the city has already died of the coronavirus, identified as a 36-year-old nursing manager at Mount Sinai West. City officials have insisted that there is enough protective equipment for roughly the next week during this public health crisis, even if they're out of work or their businesses had to shut down. This 90-day grace period cannot and will not be used to downgrade anyone's credit rating, and lenders will also waive any late fees. Governor Murphy says over 40 state and federally chartered financial institutions are taking part in the program, and more 
are expected to sign on. On Long Island, the county executive in Nassau says they desperately need more ventilators, calling the, uh, the situation dire. Laura Curran says there are 906 COVID-19 patients now hospitalized in the county, with 185 on ventilators in critical condition. She also warns anyone with mild symptoms to stay home and call their health care providers instead, because many hospitals are already overwhelmed with patients. Nassau now reports over 5,500 coronavirus cases and seven new deaths, bringing the county's death toll to 34. Our coronavirus coverage will continue shortly here on 1010 Winds. Winds news time, 1101. President Pat Lynch. Right now, police officers, health care workers, and so many other essential employees are heading to work. We can't stay home. Our mission comes first. We have to protect you on the front lines of a global health crisis. And we're not just battling the virus. We're still fighting crime, responding to emergencies, and keeping our city running. Yes, these are the jobs we signed up for, but we aren't the only ones who sacrifice. Our families are sacrificing along with us, and they bear the greatest burden. They support us through long hours and uncertain schedules. They share our stress and our fatigue. And if we're exposed to the virus at work, they could be exposed too. So when you think about the cops and other frontline workers who are still on the job and at risk, remember, we aren't alone. Our families are on the front lines too, and they deserve all of our respect. Paid for by the Police Benevolent Association of the City of New York, Inc. It's happening wherever cupcakes are being frosted. to be 